Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and today I would like to show you my game that I just played a few days ago in the German Bundesliga round number 13. My club Hamburg was playing against MSA Zugzwang and this was a very important match because we were both, both teams were fighting against relegation and we definitely needed to win some matches. So there was some additional pressure on us. And I played against Grandmaster, German Grandmaster, Gerald Hartnack. So let's begin before we start. Though of course the comment of the day and the comment of the day comes by Ignacio Cipida. Sorry for the mis probable mispronunciation. He says, congratulations. He says a lot, you can actually read yourself. And he makes a suggestion. That's what I want to get to. And he says, play a tournament on leeches. Usually I play most of the time on Chess24, I've also played a little bit on Chess.com. I've not really streamed on Lee Chess, so this is my question to you. Here's a suggestion, what do you guys think, where should I play? Should I play on Lee Chess, Chess24, Chess.com, maybe somewhere else? You can let me know in the comments and we can discuss it. Alright, now let's get to the game. I was playing with the black pieces and my apologies, in the program I'm using I cannot flip the board. So you see I'm on the top here playing with the black pieces and well we have to do it like this. So my opponent started with d4 that's his main weapon and we have the queen's gambit accepted here e3 bishop g4 this is kind of one of my pet lines I played this a lot already and also with some good results black brings the bishop out and now knight c3 and knight c6 black has many choices here but knight c6 I like the setup black goes bishop d6 and often has the idea to play e5 in the center. Bishop b5 is the principal try against the setup, threatening to maybe take on c6 and destroy my pawn structure. Bishop b4. And now my opponent played a3, and this is not the critical try. The critical move has to be queen a4, I believe. Anyways, a3, bishop takes c3, takes castle. So here we are both on our own. Now my opponent went bishop e2. A logical move because this pin sooner or later white has to do something about it he doesn't really want to go g4 because it would weak his king too much so he has to unpin his knight and if he moves his queen there's always the threat of me taking on f3 and and further damaging his pawn structure so bishop e2 is logical knight a5 was also a logical move to me because i want to go c5 here and attack the pawn center this way and also I'm a little bit ahead in development so I want to start doing something c5 a4 and here I thought for a very long time and I took on d4 which is possible but I can just play queen c7 here honestly and if bishop a3 simply protect the pawn of b6 and I think this is a comfortable position for black it's roughly equal but I think comfortable more comfortable to play with the black pieces because of their c takes d4, it becomes quite forcing and the position simplifies a little bit. c takes d4, knight e4. Now I want to play knight c3. And he goes bishop a3. He allows me to do that because he couldn't really deal with this threat in a nice way. If he goes queen c2 or queen d3, I can play bishop g6. Alright, so bishop a3, knight c3, queen d1, I take the bishop on e2 and I have to move my rook, so rook e8, my rook was attacked and now rook fb1. I was more so considering rook c1 but my opponent played rook fb1 rather quickly. Alright, so here I played rook c8, logical move to occupy the open c file and my opponent shows the idea, this is why he played rook b1, he wants to go rook b5 and he attacks my bishop at h5. And here I took on f3. I didn't like bishop g6 that much because of knight e5. So I took on f3. Queen takes. And now I played b6. To be able to move my knight to c4. And here my opponent played d5. <clears throat> and first I thought it wasn't possible because I thought I can play a6. But a6 is not a good move. White well, doesn't have to move the rook. But he can take on e6. And there's the threat of e takes f7 and now i have to take back and this was not my intention i actually weakened the pawn on b6 so this doesn't work and i played knight c4 instead which is good now d takes e6 and first i automatically want to take back with the rook that's the obvious recapture 
and actually is also the better move. But then I thought about it and well here white brings the rook to d5, queen e8 and the position is roughly equal. I have a nice knight on c4 but also bishop can become strong if he gets onto his diagonal. But then I thought about it and I, I played f takes e6 actually and I'll tell you why. Well, I damaged my pawn structure, now I have more pawn islands, obviously. This pawn is isolated on e6 and possibly weak. But my idea was I want to play against this rook. The rook cannot come back into a game right now. And also I thought maybe I can get some play on the half open f file. My opponent played rook d1 and then I'm doing okay. If He, he can probably get a better game if he plays bishop b2 here. Immediately and... Position is still, I think, rather unclear. I guess I could even take, but then I have the slightly weaker pawn structure and white is a tiny bit better, maybe. So he goes rook d1, but now here we see another idea that I had. I can play queen f6 and white exchanges, and now I've improved my pawn structure a little bit. It feels like I still have two pawn islands, but those pawns are together now, they can cover some squares. Alright, so now my opponent played bishop b2 and he's threatening to go rook d7. So I go king f7, so if rook d7 I can reply with rook e7, rook d4. And here I play rook e d8. Actually e5 was possible and I considered this move but I thought he can just go rook h4 and I have to do something about this pawn. But in fact it turns out I can play this move. And I actually looked at this variation, but <laughs> you have to be quite sure before, before you sacrifice two pawns. And this might be good for black, but uh, it's rather complicated. Rook d to d2, bishop c1, rook takes f2, and I have some play against the king. My knight is still well placed. Quite complicated position for sure. Rook ed8. The move I played is definitely safer. Now my opponent played rook to f4 and I can of course always take on b2 but I thought I might be still a tiny bit worse with the worst pawn structure. Actually it should be just a draw but I played rook d1 check, king h2 and I played f5. The pawn was attacked on f6 and I cannot go e5 because of bishop takes e5. Actually, I also considered this and then to play a6 here when I'm going to win a piece, but white gets a lot of pawns for the piece and actually can play rook takes b6 here as well. And he has three pawns for the piece and it's definitely uh, not worse. I'm fighting for a draw there. So I played f5, rook to b4, and now knight d2, threatening knight f1 check, g4. Rook c2. So now if he takes on f5, I can actually go knight f1 check, king g2, and the knight picks up this pawn and picks up this pawn and I'm up a pawn. So that doesn't work. So he goes king g2, now rook b1. I keep on hassling my opponent, bishop a3, and now rook a1. And here my opponent played rook b2, which is an inaccuracy. He should go bishop b2 back when I can make a draw, but of course I want to keep on playing. So I was considering rook a2, but it turns out that this, while possible, is maybe not the best move because white has a nice move here, bishop h8. And I thought that I can just go king g6, something like this, and then prepare knight e4. But it turns out that this in this situation, white can activate the rook, and then if knight e4, white can just take. And if I take back, I'm getting checkmate. That's why the bishop was well placed on h8. And king g3, h4, incoming, checkmate. So bishop b2 would have been a better move. But you play rook b2. I trade the rooks and I go rook a2. And now bishop h8. It's a good move and the only move to keep the balance. King g6. And here my pawn should go rook d4 immediately to keep these pawns on the board and the position would be equal. But he took. And now this position becomes quite uncomfortable 
because even though there's limited material on the board, my knight is coming to e4, I have a potential pass, remote pass pawn here on the queen side, and my pieces are well placed. But my opponent found the only sequence to keep him in the game, I think. He went rook d4, he, he cannot allow his rook getting trapped on, on f4. Here now the rook is trapped, cannot get out, so that would be terrible. So he goes rook d4, knight e4, and rook d7. He has to seek counterplay. And this is also something you can remember for your own games. In the end game, activity is vital. So if you're passive and you're defending, try to get counterplay. That's the way to go usually in the end game. So now I have a choice. I can take on a4 and I can take on f2. But it turns out that white has enough defensive resource in both cases. I took on f2. If I take on a4, that first looks very nice because I have two connected past pawns. But black go white goes rook g7, king to h6, and now simply rook f7. And it turns out that white is too active here. Of course, this is a repetition of moves. And if I play a move like rook a5, then there's even h4. But I thought also if white just goes bishop d4, his piece is so well placed that I cannot make any progress here. And white doesn't have any difficulties. And that's correct. So I took on f2, king goes back to g1, and now I play a5, which is the best try. Rook g7 check, king h6, and here my opponent could have also played rook f7 once more, which would have been a clear way to reach a draw, but he played rook b7, now rook a2, and bishop e5, good move, good defense here by my opponent for sure. If I take on a4 now, he gives a check on f4, which is really uncomfortable because if I go to g6, he picks up the b6 pawn of check. If I go to h5, he takes an h7 and then picks up the b6 pawn and the material is equal. So instead, in this position, I went knight g5. The point is that I'm blocking the check and I'm threatening to take. And my pawn played bishop f4, pinning the knight. I go king h5. Here, white had the threat of h4, so I need to do something about it. King h5 takes, takes. And we reached a rook end game where I'm still a pawn up, but the white rook is well placed, and this is a draw. Here, important move, I think, to get the king off the, the first rank. You don't want to have your king cut off on the first rank. So if white was to go rook b5, rook a2, I mean, this might be still... Okay, actually, here white has e4, so this was possible. But let's say rook a6, now rook a2, now this would be a win for black because the king is cut off. Okay, so king f2, it's important to not have the king cut off. And now I played rook e4. But yeah, in either case, the position is a draw here. Rook e4, he played rook b5. Actually, my idea was that after rook a6, I want to go rook e5. And I thought it might be smart to keep my pawns protected this way. It's also a draw, but I can still keep on trying. Rook b5 was a neat little move, I thought. a4 and rook a5. And now, play king f6, king f3, h5. But now it just gives checks. And the problem is, okay, let's say I go to g5. The problem is, the problem is I cannot make any progress, really. So rook a5. And yes, I can play h4, but it doesn't matter. So he just, I don't know, play rook a6 again. And I don't see really a way to make progress here. Still, maybe I could have tried. Maybe at some point I can go f4. But ultimately, it's also a draw. Still probably better try than what I did in the game. I went, I ran towards my pawn on a4. Right here, king d6. And the point is now that after rook takes f5, I have this move, rook e5. And the pawn game would be winning, so white cannot trade. He has only one move here, because I'm also threatening to bring the rook behind my pawn. That's always something you want to do in the rook end games. Rooks behind the pawns, whether it's your own or the pawn of your opponent. So he goes rook f6 check. Now the problem is if I go rook e6, he can go rook f4 and I cannot defend my pawns. So that would be pretty bad. So I go king c5. Now king f4. Rook d5, and he goes e4, and once again I have the same idea, rook d6, to exchange rooks, and he cannot take once more. He can also not play e5, because this 
opponent game is winning because I will okay now it's clear but uh, let's do this the point is that <clears throat> I will enter with check okay so that doesn't work so rook f5 check he played king b4 and now e5 rook a6 I brought my rook behind my pawn but he has enough counterplay here and he can sacrifice the rook against the pawn and then liquidate the rest of the material because I also have to sacrifice my rook for one of these pawns. So let's see how this played out. Rook f6, rook a8, king g5, a3. Now he brings the rook back, brings the rook on a1. And now rook g8. I cut off the king, but it doesn't matter here. I'm just not in time because my king will be way too far away from those pawns. King h6, king b2, queen. I come back, but I'm not in time. I stopped the pawn. And he is promoting the h7 pawn. Oh, he's threatening, so I have to take the pawn. And that's what I did. And then it was a draw. All right. So, tried everything in this game until the bear kings were on the board, but there was nothing to be done. My opponent defended well, and I had an advantage. Sure, I was a pawn up. But the Rook Den games have a large drawing tendency. And so it's always a good idea if you're defending to try to get into a Rook Den game because many Rook Den games, which where you're pawn down or even sometimes two pawns down, can still be hold if you're active enough. And that was the case for White here. And also, there were not a lot of pawns left on the board. All right, so that was my game from round 13 of the German Bundesliga, season 27 2018. But while I was hold to a draw, we were still able to win the match 5.5 and 2.5 and, and, and made a big step towards the saving, saving ourselves and staying in the league. So that was good. And I have two more games prepared for you guys and I will release them soon where I also cover my other games that weekend because we have three games in total. All right, you guys. Ah, I have one final question. So how do you like these game analysis where where I show you my own games compared to when I show you uh, the top games of Carlsen and Karana and so on. Do you have any preference or do you like them both? So I would love to hear your comments. And also there was this other question about where I should play lead chess, chess may for chess.com if there are any preferences from your side, because for me, it's all good. All right. All right, you guys, then see you next time. Bye bye.